Hello everyone, welcome back to Spiritual Essence. From time to time, I am going to uh, share a story. Uh, we'll just call it Spiritual Story Time. Uh, that has to do with um, magic and things that I've gone through uh, that maybe you guys can relate to in some way, shape, or form. Uh, in this story, which shouldn't take very long, so this might be a short video, I'm going to um, tell you guys um, what initially started my my search for knowledge in my spiritual path and my quest for magic and really made a big impact on me as a child. I grew up in a, uh, a household that was, you know, pretty much Christian. My dad, he was very pious Christian. He's still a Christian today. Uh, uh, my mom, she claims to be when she feels it's necessary. Uh, my sister, she don't really know exactly what she is, but uh, she's been practicing a little bit of magic too, but not nearly as much as I have. And uh, my parents, they don't exactly agree with me practicing magic, but I keep telling them that it's none of their concern. Uh, but... This actually has to do with the first nightmare I've ever had, and it was so real that for so long I searched for answers anywhere I could, and eventually I believe I found the answers uh, when studying my magic. You might see in the background my bookshelf. It's full of my magic books and the uh, books I study, many of them to which I still need to read. But anyway... <clears throat> the story begins, um, so I remember, uh, the first time, it began in a regular dream, and I remember I encountered this being, he was like a large kangaroo, almost adult size, but he was he was definitely taller than a regular adult was which made him tower over me as a child i remember his black eyes and his sharp claws he had almost raptor like claws if you've seen jurassic park they were like that sharp um and i remember he just he stared at me at first, and then eventually he made a move, and he came towards me, and I felt nothing but fear. And um, you might laugh at this, but it was actually pretty terrifying as a child. He used to forcefully tickle me. Now, if, especially because I'm really, you know, ticklish, but the worst part was that whenever I tried to tell him to stop, I couldn't speak. No words would come out of my mouth. I tried to scream for my mom and dad, but I could not make a move. And when I tried to push him off of me, my my arms would be like this. They would be frozen, and I, I couldn't move, which basically let him do whatever he wanted. So I was, like, paralyzed. And I remember I woke up terrified. I told my mom and dad, and um, they're like, it's just a nightmare. It'll go away. And I was hoping they were right. And... Uh, then I remember I had gone to bed and I was playing with uh, this old Barbie doll boot, I remember, and I was just playing with it and looking at it. I was still awake and um, I had a little kitty bed. And uh, there were, like, bars at the end of the bed. And I saw something move uh, as I focused in on the, uh, the boot. And when I looked up, he was like this, with his claws hanging over the bars, and he was just staring at me. And then, out of nowhere, this light came from underneath my, my, uh, underneath me, on the bed like here I was like laying down here and it came from underneath me and all of a sudden his claws just came out and pulled me into his world 
and I remember trying to like hold on to the covers. I tried to grab for anything, but he just kept forcefully pulling me down and eventually I was in his world and I remember in the nightmares he would always try to da uh, drag me down to the dark basement. He would always try. And he would do the same thing. He would forcefully tickle me and I couldn't move at all. It's very terrifying. Um, the third experience I had with this being was something I will never ever forget. So I remember I was asleep and I knew I was dreaming. I had a nightmare that um, I was down my grandma and grandpa's street at the corner and there was this girl. I didn't recognize her, but she was being followed by this man. He, he looked like a teenager and he was wearing a blue sweater and jeans. And she was, you know, asking him, like, why are you following me? Why are you following me? And then all of a sudden, he, he literally unzipped his face and it was the kangaroo and I remember he was he went from looking at her to looking at me and that's when I woke up from the nightmare but it wasn't over cuz I used to have one of those big box televisions as a kid with the big body uh, extending out that was before the flat screens and a portal had opened up to where it was the same scene it was the girl and then the kangaroo creature down the street. And I remember pinching myself because my parents always said, well, if, you, if you're ever in a dream and you realize you're in a dream and you don't like what you see, remember to pinch yourself. So I remember pinching myself. And I kept doing it and I'm like, why isn't it working? Why ain't I waking up? Am I, am I up? He his hand came out of the television and he, he was like really had a grip on me and I eventually pulled away and went to run over to my uh, my mom and dad's room and I remember I'm like what if they don't believe me again I have to be sure he's real so I remember looking back and he was still coming out of the television and I, I, I remember running to my mom and dad and I, I was crying and I'm like, he's back, he's back, the kangaroo's back. So my dad went to look in my room and of course he was gone. But I remember seeing that I had handprints on my, on my arm. And I, I remember like, you know when someone grabs you and then they pull away but you still feel like something was there? I felt it. It was a... Uh, uh, like a light pressure well actually you know it was like a a pressure kind of and I remember uh, as soon as they put me to bed and, and went back to sleep I took a blanket of mine crawled into their room and slept on the floor because I was not going back in that room and I remember I kept watching the hallway to make sure that he wouldn't come back my dad even tried to say, hey, I, I beat up the kangaroo and I, I shoved him out of the house. He's gone. He's gone. But I still saw him a few times after that. It wasn't until I received a dream catcher from my parents uh, as an Easter present that he went away. They told me, uh, you know, all about it, that, you know, they filter out your dreams and all the bad ones, they get caught, and then they'll burn away with the sun. I remember I never saw him again after that. Only on occasion I would see him very rare, though, like maybe five years at a time. I would occasionally see him in dreams, but he couldn't do nothing. He, because I, as I grew up, I knew I had more power than him and I had confidence that he wouldn't be back so 
I I haven't seen him in years. But I know that he was something more than a nightmare. Um, I believe because I was a child and I feared a lot more, which is what allowed him to have more power and control over me. I believe he was some kind of evil spirit, maybe a demon, that was trying to, you know, torment me and feed off me, feed off my fear. Um, and he came after me because he knew I was young and vulnerable. I don't know if it had a name, but whatever it was, it was terrifying. And I know what some people might say, well, maybe it was a nightmare that was realistic and you maybe got the character off something like Kangaroo Jack. First off, I've never seen Kangaroo Jack before. I've never seen Kangaroo Jack. And I remember around those times that I wasn't reading anything in school about kangaroos. I wasn't studying kangaroos. I wasn't drawing no kangaroos. So, um, I didn't even watch any movies with kangaroos in them, so I don't understand where he, you know, if that was a nightmare, where did that come from? Where did that image come from? Because I remember he, I used to think about him all day at school and I'd be, you know, terrified to go to sleep. And... Uh, if they were nightmares, they were the most realistic I've ever had, and that's including the ones I may have today. So, um, I don't believe it was my imagination. I believe this thing was real, and um, if you've had nightmares like that where you knew that they were a lot more real and physical than any nightmare could be. What definitely helped was the Dreamcatcher. And I believe it was my my firm belief that it was going to work, which helped. Uh, if you uh, were to have, you know, nightmares, there's a lot of things you can do. Meditation to clear your energy. Uh, praying also helps. Uh, smudging your room with uh, some blessed incense or charged sage. Um, something that I do is I place crystals around my room, uh, such as quartz and amethyst, and they soak up the uh, negative energy, and amethyst actually dispels negative energy, which is why I use it. And quartz is used in, like, it's almost like a universal stone, so it's also a good one to use. Um, but I remember it was a terrifying experience and if I had known then what I know now, I probably would have been able to go up against this kangaroo spirit. Uh, but luckily I haven't seen him in years and I hope it stays that way. But he is one of the reasons why I I study magic today to find out more about these evil spirits why do they choose a person where do they come from how do we stop them um, it's just one of the many reasons that eventually led me on this path I believe it happened for a reason as terrifying as it was it helped make me stronger as a person. Alright, that's the end of my spiritual story time. Stay tuned for more content like that because I have had other experiences. Um, if you have any comments, questions, concerns, maybe experiences of your own, feel free to share them down in the comments section. Um, not just for my eyes, but it would also help others who are watching this video who may be curious, who may have had similar experiences, to hear the experiences of others. And um, that is it. I hope you all have blessed sleep and follow the path of love and light. <laughs>